He's an eccentric billionaire with nothing but a bunch of extra time to spare. He's got his favorite subject and he's happy to share everything he knows about Greece. He'll go to every single ritzy secret event and mingle with his buddies in the 1%, but they find his passion an embarrassment and repeatedly ask him to cease. But never one to back down, ever a pro. He claims there's nothing else that's even worth it to know. So he grabbed his butler, Eric, and he started a show to see if anything will catch his eye. Now every fresh contestant must babble and boast on the subject of their choosing that they treasure the most. Put your hands together and welcome your host. It's Adam Maximilian, Josephus, Vin Diesel, Riffi. It's Tell Me About It. Welcome to Tell Me About It, a game show about proving the things you love are actually interesting and fun. I am Adel Refai, local eccentric multi-billionaire, and I am still looking, searching for someone to show me something that is better and more interesting than the movie Grease. Though I am not doing this by myself, please welcome my butler, who needs partial sunlight and water only once a week, pretty efficient, Eric Silver! Don't water me at midnight or then I'll freak out like a gremlin. Oh, yes. Well, oh, let's see. Before they're gremlins, they're called mogwais? No. Are they always gremlins and then become super gremlins? You only have to water me once a week. I don't know. <laughs> My brain is not grown enough to remember any of this stuff. All I know is that one of the gremlins becomes very sexy. Uh, one uh, of them... Honestly, the next thing I was going to say was I know there's one lady sexy gremlin. <laughs> oh, you misunderstood. I'm talking about the gremlin made entirely out of electricity. Oh, you only care about what people think. You only care about smarts. You're a sapiosexual. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Much like, so that's why you like Gizmo. Exactly. And it, it's interesting that when I said sexy gremlin, you just assumed it would be the one in a leather red miniskirt and makeup. Yeah, that's Interesting. my thing. <laughs> Interesting. You're projecting, huh? I look pretty in a red miniskirt and makeup, Adel. Thank you for wearing Mr. that today. Mr. Rafai. Sorry, I forget myself because uh, because you know how I feel about uh, how I look in miniskirts. Absolutely. Uh, don't get you wet after midnight. And I do have to apologize, <laughs> Eric. Uh, you might have to pick up some of the burden because I, in case you can't hear to my voice, I have a touch of influencer. Of course, Ooh. it's a uh, flu that only affects people uh, who have over 2 billion followers on Instagram. So please excuse my voice and uh, any nasally drippy sound. Yeah. You will need to do an ad for both kinds of weird tummy tea. Mm -hmm. We can't get out of that. Yes, absolutely. Well, Eric, who do we have on the dock today? And by the dock, <laughs> I mean a, my yacht should have dropped off our guest can you go check okay, on that? Yeah. All right, hold on. She's standing on a sailboat. She's coming in. Otis Redding, get out of the way. Uh, I never should have reanimated his corpse. Otis, <laughs> stop sitting there. That's a pup. Otis, that is not for sitting. Please move. Sorry about him. All right, uh, Mr. Redding is finally out of the way. There's an octopus driving the sailboat, coming in. Now it's holding on to the thing, doing a really nice knot. And the boat, my boat has come in. It is... <laughs> Oh, I'm enjoying myself. We haven't recorded this in a while. Um, uh, the introducing writer and host of Pale Blue Pod, the best podcast about not being afraid of space, right off of the boat. No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> right. <laughs> fresh off the boat. Fre yeah, fresh off the boat. Um, stepping st on dry land for the first time in seven days. It's Corinne Caputo. It's me. Hi. Thank you so much for that long boat ride. That was wild. Yes. Thank you for agreeing to such a nautical journey. We're delighted to have you. I love a cruise. Corinne Caputo, I have to say, one, it's just an absolute pleasure to meet you. And two, you have the best name for a mafioso enforcer I've ever heard. Oh, thank you. I agree. And I am from Staten Island. So oh. there, you know, there's probably some some overlapping blood there. Okay, then uh, please forgive my joke. And uh, uh, <laughs> Eric, please, let's get her a drink or whatever you want or some warm clothes. Um, Sorry. Uh, apologies uh, for the joke. Uh, I got I got confused. It wasn't a sailboat. It was the Staten Island Ferry. It was Corinne, Staten Island Ferry. It's mandatory oh. for Corinne to be taking the Staten Island Ferry. Was it that one goes. that Pete Davidson and Colin Jost bought? So that one's actually in Florida right now because they couldn't oh. find a place to park it, which is true. And um, I did. New York City living, am I right? <laughs> I did get married on the Staten Island Ferry in October. Um, that's not a joke. Thank you. It was a very fun flash mob type wedding. And I got to say, the Staten Island Ferry is my favorite character in Midsummer Night's Dream. Just what? A, just kind of, that ferry just 
kind of really introduces a lot of chaos to Puck yeah. and the whole gang. Yeah. And I've also heard from several people, uh, I can't remember who told me this, but they said the way to, to test a true Long Islander is to see if they say lawn, as in lawn Cheney, lawn or lawn care, lawn Guyland. La- Long Island. Long I think Gu- I say it, I think I say it as a non- New Yorker, like, okay. I, I think that I've kind of subconsciously tried to lose my accent. So that you, they can't see you coming. Yeah, exactly. Because you're already Korean Caputo, so you lose it as soon as they know your name. Exactly. They can't, they, there's only so much I want to give away about who I am. Yeah, absolutely. And Caputo, I do have to ask, Caputo, any relation to Naruto? No. <laughs> okay, had to ask. No, you have to ask, though. I get that a lot. Yeah, just seeing if there's some weird uh, Ellis Island situation going on where they I change it from. I going to say Teresa Caputo, the Long Island medium. Oh, who's who this now? TLC show, not related to me, but I would love if we had a medium in the family. Speaking of TLC, um, Eric, do you remember when I dated T Boz? <laughs> I do. Uh, my left eye hurt the entire time. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it was twitching even. Um, anyway, Corinne, thank you so much for being here. We're so excited to have you. Um, tell us a little bit about what you'll be talking about today. Okay, so I really racked my brain about what I find interesting because it felt like both nothing and a lot of things. Um, and I famously stopped improvising uh, or doing improv comedy because I would often need to look around the room to think of something. Famously, um, huh? <laughs> yeah, my, um, yeah, my character names were like you know, cabinet or chair or like... Sure, Tony Mountain Dew. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, So you, I was asked like what I find interesting and and I looked around the room and I was like, of course, it's houseplants. Mm. And I'm really curious to see what happens next year. (laughs) Well, that's a different (laughs) show. Uh, Andy Cohen is a dear cousin of mine. (laughs) But we won't be seeing what happens next, but we will be putting you through your houseplant paces. Now, Eric, I don't know if you remember this. When you were my lovely assistant, also in a tight red mini dress, leather. I looked incredible, and everyone (laughs) said so, even you. Thank you. You said it. (laughs) When you were my lovely assistant, when I was a magician, when I was the astounding asshole, I remember one time I was doing a trick, and I had a houseplant, and I said, is anyone here um, wanting to come up on stage? And I had a house plant, but it had died in the audience because I forgot to water it and feed it. <gasps> so that gentleman, who I paid to uh, pretend he didn't know me, is now deceased. And I owed his estate quite a lot of money. So I am a little, my heckles are up just a little bit talking about house plants yeah. just because of my experience. But I am very excited to learn all about uh, ficus. Ficus? What are ficus. those? Ficus. Yeah, a ficus. A ficus. ficus. That's the only one I know. Besides cacti or uh, <laughs> or bonsai or succulents, like I guess I know a few. I will say succulents are not quite my expertise the way that some of the more vining houseplants tend to be. Interesting. I feel like we're going to get really into you shading other types of pe- people who are just getting into the plant game now. <laughs> And I really might. fall for the millennial need Air to plants. have a yeah to have yep. a living thing that you don't have to have any responsibilities yes. for, which is the succulent. Yeah, I think I have a lot of um, where my OCD really flares is in like personifying things. <laughs> so there's something that's been very troubling about my kind of commitment to these houseplants where I'm like, this is a living thing, mm-hmm. and if I fuck up, that's a bad. That's bad. Absolutely. I've killed many a plant. Um, See, that's why we're having Teresa Caputo come on to talk (laughs) to your dead plants and also the guy in the audience. Yeah, and they're all like, she put us in the garbage. (laughs) All right, hold on. Hold on. (laughs) I'm feeling a root in this this area. Maybe in this area. I don't know. I'm going to Bagel Boss. Who wants some? (laughs) Your roots are showing. Eric, why don't you go ahead and stay out of the sunlight, of course, and take us on over to round one. Absolutely. All right. Round one is called Just Tell Me About It. Ah. Corinne, I have 10 foundational points about houseplants here. Please give us an overview of your topic. Uh, I'm going to set five minutes on the clock. We're just going to have a conversation <gasps> about it. houseplants. Uh, you get points for hitting each bullet, especially if you make them sound interesting and cool. Uh, Eric, um, just due to the joke I made earlier, could you say anything except for bullet? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you get points for each knife. A- <laughs> oh, <laughs> actually, <laughs> uh, I should have been more specific. Uh, any sort of non-lethal, um, like don't don't say like for any cement shoes you hit. You, you know, just sure. something 
more innocuous. All right, Corinne recording equipment, you get 10 <laughs> you get a point for each taser, especially Perfect. if you make them sound interesting and cool. Okay, copy, copy. Okay, I'm going to do my best here. Absolutely. And I imagine these um, points are completely secret to me. They are completely secret to you. Okay. I've organized them based off of Wikipedia and some houseplant care websites that I found. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, Corinne, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, five minutes on the clock starting now. Okay, I got into houseplants um, during COVID, which is kind of embarrassing because I think everybody did. Um, but I was really interested in making a house feel like just more than just stuff. And um, I started on Facebook Marketplace by buying other people's plants, which was crazy because I was living, I moved to a new city, so I had spent almost no time in it before I moved. So that was, I also had no car. So it was just walking <laughs> across the city yeah. to That's what Facebook Marketplace house. is for, yes. for you just to show up at someone's house yep. and being like, thanks for this and just walking out with 100%. your hands. And Corinne, and, real, real quick for a bonus point, um, True or False, Naughty by Nature's classic 1991 hit, OPP, is about other people's plants. True. Yes. Extra point. <laughs> That's <true>. a point. <laughs> um, yeah, I walked across. I'm in Portland, Maine. I walked across the peninsula to pick up a plant from someone's porch. It was like this gorgeous, long, vining pothos, golden pothos that needed like medium light. And you can really water it once a week. It'll tell you when it needs water. And I was Long like, Island, medium light. Exactly. <laughs> and I felt a calling to it. Walked across the city. This is pre-vaccine, so I was, like, pretty scared of seeing anybody. Like, But you were fine with going over to random I'll people's I'll go to someone's houses. house, but I'm like, you're going to leave the plant on the porch, and, you're, Got it. Okay, <laughs> and I'll wave to you from the window. <laughs> and then... Um, Evan Hansen style. The walk there was easy breezy, um, and the walk back was one of the most difficult walks I've ever done because this plant was so heavy and oh, big, no. and I didn't bring a bag or anything because like who no really dolly has a for bag? the plant, no dolly. The laundry cart we left behind in New York. I had no, <laughs> I had nothing with me. Finally made it home, and I called my husband halfway home, and I was like, "You have to meet me outside once I get to the apartment. Like I will not be able to make it up the stairs with this plant." And he did, and we got upstairs, and the next day our couch gets delivered. And I have jelly arms and I cannot get this couch upstairs. That is suddenly this couch that I ordered, I like owned the project, could not um, participate in it at all. And I still have that plant. It's taller than me. Um, yeah. I love it. I trim, I gave it, I got a haircut this week and I gave it a haircut too. Oh, twins. And twins. And I, um, that was like my first plant, but I have so many more now. Um, I have made more mistakes walking plants home, but that was the first one. Corinne, this was an incredible story, and I'm so glad you shared with, uh, that with us. I'm sure I've you, touched on no you points. You have used three minutes. You have touched so little points. Okay. Corinne, tell us about taking Here's care of our Hold on. I do want to give her a bonus point because we did raise awareness for the medical issue that is jelly arms. Jelly arms, now, I think not enough people are talking about. Dozens of people a year suffer from jelly arms by carrying heavy items, by uh -huh. arm wrestling their friends, and it's and not talked about enough. We're expecting them to go back to their day as normal. No, no, you no, can't. no, no. There's you a can't. recovery period. So thank That's you. That's why for we're that. organizing that walk and also very light lifting. For <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's what else I like about plants: they grow. Um, they oh, yeah. they need light and water. There's soil. You can also grow them in water. They don't have to be in soil. You could use things like leca or um, like pro you can propagate them and just like grow new roots. I love that I look at my plants and I'm like, some of the things that are on that plant did not exist in the universe before I was caring for it. Like this piece grew. Like this didn't exist. Um, so that's very cool. They're living. They people think that they like keep your air fresher. Research I've read about it is like they they're not making a significant impact. Um, but yeah, you can say that. One thing I hate about them is like they might Ooh. have bugs and pests. The STDs mm. of plants. Exactly. I've decided that can't happen to me, so I just assume that's not <laughs> happening. <laughs> Hey, if you don't want it to happen, it probably won't happen. It probably won't happen. Murphy's Murphy's law. Murphy's in law. Yep, that's the Occam's razor of 
it's actually easiest if this doesn't happen to me. Um, Occ- Occam's razor <laughs> is when you chop your plants up too yes. small and then they don't grow anything. The simplest um, plan is usually the right plan. I have a lot of them. There's so many different kinds. They all have different needs. That is fun to take care of if you need stuff to occupy your brain of like, who am I keeping track of today? Um, you can also propagate them. I love doing that. Just give them a little trim and throw those cuttings in water and you have a new plant. You can give those away. That's always fun. And time. Great job, bingo. Corinne. You <laughs> definitely Oh, wait, you got bingo? Can, can you check her card, Eric? Oh, sorry. It's okay, bingo. hold on. There's um, no way she got bingo. Teresa Caputo, Jelly Arms. The center was you talking about Otis Redding. <laughs> Fuck um, me, she got it. Okay, all right. I know. There's all, all those That's are all there. That's all it takes. It's actually yeah. easy to get bingo. Occam's Give razor. Give $150. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Again, Occam's razor applies to anything for whatever uh, whatever situation you want. Anything you decide. Yes, anything yeah. you decide. Go. All right, Corinne. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. You hit on the important stuff, which is- The story about plans. moving plans. Yeah, which is a, the awareness of jelly arms. Um, you definitely you need to monitor their moisture levels, their light and soil and humidity. Yeah. Um, you did do this stuff about purifying the air in your home. Uh, and I like to think that boosting you boost your immune system when you bring bugs and, and pests into Ooh. your house. So that's pretty good. Yeah. So I'll give you I'll give you the point. We had some other stuff about like where houseplants came from, uh, how they usually thrive in terms of the temperature. Also about like playing music for your plants. Oh, yeah. Also, uh, f- even fake plants make you feel good, which oh, is something that I, I found. Yeah. So you did you did hit a few, and also you said a lot of different types of plants. I once had a sunflower with glasses who would dance to music, and a Coke can with glasses, I guess. You also had a fish that was mounted on the wall that, that you uh, danced to music. Don't bring that up. We're fighting. <laughs> you and Billy Bat. You and Billy Bass. A big mouth piece of shit. Big mouth strikes again. <laughs> Morrissey was right. <laughs> All right, so Corinne, I will give you four out of ten points. All right, I disagree. However, you are up <laughs> to hold six. On. Hold oh, on, wait. I want to hear this out, know. Corinne. It sounds like you're applying Occam's razor to this. I am In- applying o- the Occam's razor. Um, I think fake plants don't count. Okay, great. Okay, extra I point. I think fake plants are collect dust and are odd. Got another extra point. <laughs> Anything and, else? Anything else you think? Um, yeah, I actually get really angry when I see fake plants. I don't okay. know why. Extra point. I'm just like, guys, that's not a plant. Don't act like you're doing what I'm doing. Yeah. My best friend is a plant <laughs> and he's alive. I love him. <laughs> that's fair. All right. That Corinne, that brings you up to seven points. Amazing. That's what I wanted. Perfect. I was going for seven. All right. That is seven plus two bonus points that you got and $150. So you have seven <gasps> points and a bingo. That's amazing. Ooh. Corinne, before we mosey on over to round two, I do want to ask, have you Unless I missed it, have you named any of your plants? I haven't done that. Would you mind, for an extra bonus point, would you mind naming your favorite plant right now? Okay, my favorite plant. Looking around the room, looking around the room. Looking at them from across the room. There's a few that I'm seeing. Ooh, okay. I think Steve. Is that so boring? No, I love it. (laughs) It's like Steve's leaves. That's a plant store. Yeah. That's a plant store. Love that. But that's fine. Steve of Steve's leaves. I mean, that's where he came from. (laughs) And I'm going to introduce you to my favorite plant. It's interesting. We we talked about gremlins earlier because a la gremlins where there's a little, um, I guess, stand where a gremlin is sold and then the stand disappears, I believe. I once bought a plant during the total eclipse of the sun um, and the store disappeared soon after. Uh, Go ahead and wheel out Audrey too, Eric. Okay. (sighs) Hold on. Uh, All right. Oh, my God. Okay. So this is named after, um, of course, Audrey from the Rocky movies, uh, famously played by <laughs> Francis Ford Coppola's sister. I want to say her name is Talia Shire. Yeah. <laughs> Adrian! <laughs> Ex- yeah. Perfect impression of <laughs> Andrea Shire. Uh, uh, Talia Shire? Andrea Shire? I don't even know who Talia, we're talking Talia about. Shire. That was the plan. That was uh, that was Adrian 2, the plan that you just told me to roll. <laughs> oh, Adrian 2, not Audrey 2. I mixed them up. I have an Audrey 2 and I have an Adrian 2. Please bring out Adrian 2. Oh, okay. Sorry, oh, okay, that was okay. Audrey too. Okay. And here is here is uh, here is Adrian too. Cool. And Eric, go ahead and box her. All right. Uh, I I know I can do it, and I definitely have the <laughs> approval of all the people near me. All right. Wow. Free me. Oh God! No! Help me! I'm not. A, it's it's taking out my insides. No, from the back and the front. This is so gruesome. Why won't any? You're just standing there. Otis, help me. Otis! 
And we'll pick up here. Corinne, thank you for coming back three years later. Eric was in a coma. Of course. He's now out. Uh, I think we'll pick up where we left off. Do you remember three years ago doing this game show? I do. It was a vague memory. I took a long boat in. This time I flew. Yeah. Oh, good. My, sh- my plane came in, the old expression. Yes. <laughs> my plane came in. And, and boy, are my jelly arms tired. I remember talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was lifting the whole way. Corinne, let's go ahead. Eric, are you? do you feel sound of body and mind to continue to round two, buddy? Yeah, uh, I'm Eric, too, and you can feed me. Absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. All right, this is time for round two. I have written down, Corinne, you have seven points and a bingo. <gasps> round two is called The Perfect Thing. Corinne, what is the perfect encapsulation of houseplants? Ooh. If someone asked you, well, what's an example of why you love houseplants so much? What would you say? Okay, this is easy for me because... What I love the most is kind of coming in to the room, let's say after a weekend away or something, and seeing a new leaf starting to peek out. Oh, it, hell the yeah. thrill is indescribable. You're like, oh my God, a new leaf is coming, everybody. And depending on the plant, it might like grow and like be furled up and then it'll just keep getting longer. And then you get to watch it unfold, which is so exciting because you're like, how big is it going to be? Is it going to have any like fenestrations inside? Are there going to be any like variegations in color? That's a thrilling feeling. Honestly, do you know about Amanda, previous guest and also my wife? Do you know that on she frequently takes photos of these and calls it hashtag LeafWatch? Do you know about LeafWatch? <gasps> no, but uh, Brandon told me that I need to talk to Amanda about houseplants. Yeah, and so Brandon, Brandon is my sub. Uh, yep. Brandon is my sub servant. He follows me around, and I treat yeah. him as badly as Mister Rafi does for me. That's did the someone cycle. call my name? <laughs> no, Brandon, get out of here. Oh, you look terrible in that oh, miniskirt. Sorry. <laughs> go go put on more makeup if you want to try that. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's how I like it. I'm taking out the the trauma that I deal with and I do it on someone else. That's that's what responsible people do. That's a natural cycle of life. Yeah. Subservient yeah. people subserve people. <laughs> Yeah, I wrote that in Occam's book. Razor. Yeah, it's Occam's that's Razor. That's Occam's Razor. <sighs> so everyone, hashtag leave watch, tag us. Leave watch, La- that's leaf perfect. Watch. That's exactly yeah. how I would describe it. And I also just got this weird goo that you can put on a plant to kind of like regrow a leaf where a leaf fell off maybe, or like activate a node that might not be growing right now. I'll let you know if it works. Okay, that might actually be Audrey 2 shit. I'm concerned <laughs> that you just have goo. Huh, I haven't heard the phrase activate a node in a dog's you- age. <laughs> You have to notch the plant, like cut it, and then rub the goo on. Huh. And what's the name of this goo, this mysterious ooze? I think it's pronounced kiki paste. It's K-E-I-K-I, <laughs> and it's for orchids. Okay. And when you went to Steve's leaves, <laughs> was Steve's leaves gone as soon as you walked out the door? It was this – I love the guy who works there. He's, like, hunched over. He has a huge cloak. You can only see the items from his jacket. <laughs> oh, <and> interesting. <laughs> So I'm looking it up online, Corinne. It looks like, yeah, if anybody is interested in that item for their plants, you can just uh, go to Kiki's Delivery Service, and they will <laughs> they will send you out that Kiki's paste uh, ASAP. They're also very they're very yeah. quick. They're very, very quick. quick. And it, it seems like there's a cat on the broom. Interesting. Uh, well, Corinne, I'm going to go ahead and give you. Let's see. You did say stimulate the the node. I think was the, activate the node, activate. which is. A, yeah, which is my new favorite phrase, activate the node. Uh, Eric, please make me a crew neck sweatshirt that says that on it in a Working fun font, it. activate the node. Um, and I do really like you said unfurl, you said watch it unfold. It seems like the way you described it made me want to buy houseplants and it seemed almost like storytelling. So I'm going to give yes. you a perfect 10 out of 10 for this round two. Oh, amazing. With the option for a bonus point, if you can make a case right now why Poison Ivy is the best Batman villain. Okay, well, obviously one of the hottest. Um, there's there's nothing like red and green together that... Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it's like... And you know what? She does it in a way that it, it never feels like the holidays. You're like, you can reclaim these colors. It's like when you wear red and yellow together and you're like, is this McDonald's? She figured out a way to, sure. to do it. <laughs> yeah. It's also one of the easiest costumes to do for Halloween because you can kind of make it look bad and people will still know who you are yeah you can just put you know leaves over your nipples and a fern down your back and just show up it's you can really phone it in with that and still Mm -hmm. look great and it's all about the look because i have no idea what her powers were i think she can 
kind of talk to and control plants. Oh, was that it? Why did I think she and, was like, poisoning men? And like seduce men with pheromones, yeah. depending on what version it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you rub a- up against her, you have a sort of rash for seven to ten days. Yes, but unless you put dish soap on it right away and let that. <laughs> I heard that's how you do it. I've never. Or your tried partner it. pees on it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I hate it when the clown prince of crime takes all the calamine lotion and then Batman. Don't Batman talk about it. Ronald McDonald that way. Is this because I'm wearing yellow and gold? Yellow You're and gold. Work. It's yours. You're wearing Wait, yellow yours. and gold. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm You're sorry. A, you look like Mayor McTeese. You're an American gladiator. You look great. <laughs> Hey, it's Eric, and this is the butler's pantry where I hide out and no one can tell me to do anything like eat their food for them because they heard that baby birding is the new nutritional trend. I'm not going to do it and no one can ask me about it. So I'm just going to be in here and can talk to you directly about the podcast. I don't know if you knew, but we have a Patreon, which goes to me and not bajillionaire Adol, but maybe real life artistic Adol and real life artistic Eric. That's where the money goes. Patreon.com slash TMAI pod, where you can become a junior audio butler and get your own little broom hung up here in the pantry. We have a lot. We're still putting them up. We could always use more. Maybe I got to expand, get a bigger pantry. Uh, because I got to fit in a new broom for newest butler, Catherine Frazier. Thank you. We are an independent podcast run by artists here in 2023. We would love your support. We are going to do ad-free episodes soon, so you can skip all this mid-roll stuff in the first place. Uh, and you can always hop up to our billionaire status, uh, where you get to, you know, talk to Adel and I one-on-one. That must be really fun, for sure. Patreon.com slash TMAI pod. We have more wonderful shows here at Multitude. You might like Spirits. Spirits is a history and comedy podcast focused on everything folklore, mythology, and the occult told through the lens of feminism, queerness, and modern adulthood. Every week, mythology buff Julia and her childhood best friend Amanda get together to learn about a different story from mythology and folklore over drinks. That's everything from the mythological origins of major franchises like Lord of the Rings and Wonder Woman to modern urban legends to round up stories of where about werewolves and many, many more things. Start listening with any of the 300 episodes they've released over the last six years. There's so much to enjoy, whether you're here for analysis of mental health through mythology or to some creepy modern ghost stories. I think you're going to love the episodes with me on it. I've talked about the Golem like six years ago, and I recently came back to talk about a new uh, Hallmark movie that revolves around a Golem, and if, if the guy in the movie is actually a Golem or something else. Also, the newest episode of Spirits that's coming out has Janet Varney on it, who you know from Tell Me About It, and also Hey Riddle Riddle, and also the JV Club, and also being awesome, so you should go listen over there. Dive in at spiritspodcast.com or search for spirits wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is sponsored by us. Tell me about it. I think you should follow us on social media. You can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash TMAI pod. You can follow us on Instagram at TMAI pod. I feel like we don't talk about it enough, but like, you know, we still use social media to market and everything. You hop on, message us, tell us you like it. Look at the graphics that I make every single episode that comes out. And if you send us a screenshot or give us a recounting of you recommending the show to someone else. If you do that through the social medias and you follow us on that social media, we will publicly bequeath you a part of billionaire Adel Refai's fortune, maybe a company he's not really doing anything with, maybe an island he just has some stuff stashed, but he doesn't really remember what's on it. We will give you that bequeathment and you'll become a gajillionaire as well. We promise we're going to do it. We'll do it right on the social media. So please check us out on Twitter and Insta. Follow us there. T M A I pod and now back to the show extra five points for describing why poison ivy making a case even why poison ivy is the best villain and now that you have those extra five points why don't you go ahead and tally those up eric and take us on over to round three absolutely sorry i'm I'm sorry uh quick um quick note we're going to be calling this round tree is that fun (gasps) Round I'm gonna write tree. that down. Round tree. All right, you uh, you had seven points in a bingo, and we're adding fifteen points, which brings you up to twenty-two points and a bingo. That's amazing. 
That's also what I wanted. Incredible. And all, all, right. all uh, um, uh, supermarket sweep will remove that bingo and find <gasps> out what the total was underneath. I guess Wheel of Fortune would have been a better uh, one to one, but I love supermarket sweep. I love yeah. supermarket sweep. It's one of the best. I that is still how I go to the grocery store. I just go to the jelly aisle and just pull pull a little bit of a cart. You run around the store. <laughs> yeah, and then I say I'm a '90s kid, and they forgive me. <laughs> I grab ten to twelve frozen turkeys and bring them up to the front, and every. Everyone says, why aren't you just grabbing medicine or magazines? Those are the smallest, most expensive items. Oh, my God. I know. I always feel like I could be really good at that game. Yeah. There is a reboot. Leslie Jones, I think, is yes. doing it. I think it was I didn't last see the year. the reboot. It did come out last year, I think. I didn't watch it. I yeah. haven't seen I feel it like Missed opportunity to cast Ralph Macchio in Supermarket Sweep the Leg. Anyway, Eric, take us over to <laughs> Round Tree. <laughs> All right. It's Round Tree, the question and answer portion. <gasps> We have some follow-up questions for you, and they are the gotcha questions that no <gasps> one asked any of the magical salesmen from the various movies that we've been quoting. Please answer as many as possible as Mr. Rafai asked them of you. Okay. Thank you so much. Corinne, you ready? Copy. Sorry, don't don't copy what I do. <laughs> okay. Here we go. First question. Why are you spending all your money on plants and avocado toast when you could buy a beautiful three-story colonial house in Connecticut? Okay, amazing question. I actually turned down buying a thousand dollar plant a few weeks ago, so I think I'm making the right choices. How, what plant was a thousand dollars? A very good monstera. Taxes? It was like a gorgeous monstera that had white in the leaves, and you know what? They were charging way too much because now you can get cuttings for a few hundred dollars on Etsy. The only plant worth a thousand dollars is Chernobyl, and guess what? I bought it after I saw the <laughs> HBO series, which was so good. And I'm so thankful that all the actors spoke in English, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to understand it. <laughs> you can't I'll, read. I can't There's read. No thank you. <laughs> I, thank you so much. Wait. Okay. Wait. So, with the white leaves in the Monstera, is this like a shiny Pokemon situation? Is so, this like a what? What is this? I'm pretty sure that it's a plant that can only be grown from cuttings of this mother plant. So, sure. if you have one and it's growing extra leaves, you can cut the leaves off, propagate them, root them, and sell it for to to become a new plant. Um. So for a while, it was really hard to get, and because it has white in the leaves, the green is kind of working overtime. Um, sure. The whiter a leaf, the harder it is for that leaf to like do plant stuff and survive. Um, but now they have – I mean for years this has been like a rare expensive plant to get. But enough people are getting them now and like trying to propagate and sell them themselves that they're becoming slightly easier to get. And um, there's all different like versions of like variegated monstera. So sometimes you can like randomly find one at Trader Joe's. Like you'll – check the stem and it'll have like a white stripe and if you're lucky it'll like continue to have that um but my local plant store just got one in and i went in to ask how much it cost and they said 950 jesus so this is a shiny pokemon situation yeah. it sounds like pokemon costs. and you know jesus what christ it was kind of yellowing i was like this doesn't even look like a healthy one why are you charging <laughs> me a thousand dollars wait is yellow I is yellow bad is that let me take off this yellow cardigan. Okay. <laughs> no, it's a gold cardigan. You're fine. Oh, You're okay. Fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yellow's in, but not in the plant. Yellow can signify like, okay, there, this plant has is telling me something. It's getting overwatered, mm -hmm. underwatered, not enough drainage, maybe not enough light. Something's up. Hmm. Nine fifty for a plant. Insanity. I'm a billionaire, and even I think that's insane. I think you should buy me one. Well, we might. We might be doing that depending on what's underneath your bingo uh, sticker there. It's a mystery box. It's no one knows what's box. under the bingo. We're working on it. Uh, I think that's a solid answer. So you did uh, – people out there, if you're ever faced with the opportunity to buy a $1,000 plant, don't do it. And that's good financial responsibility. <laughs> you're being fiscally responsible by not buy, buying $1,000 plants. I say it all the time. Uh, let's go ahead and move on over to question number two. Why are there so many houseplants that are poisonous to dogs and cats? Oh, my god! Is this a war on dogs and cats? I think about this a lot. I don't have a pet, and I really want one, and yet I'm like, I would have to give up some of these plants, right? Like, what do yeah. I do? Do I have to train it to not eat it? Would it automatically eat it? I have to... I can't defend plants here. I think it's really screwed up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, we respect someone who just says, yeah, you fucking got me with yeah. that one. That's awesome. A APAB. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All plants are poisonous. APAP. Yeah. I'm sorry. APAP, APAP. Which reminds me, Eric, please put on my calendar. I need my monthly APAP test. <laughs> my APAP schmear. 
Yeah, that's when we shove plants in your nose and in your cervix. I <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, so you think all plants are bad? Um, do you do you feel like the dogs and cats are responsible? Take any responsibility at all? Um, I think cats do and dogs don't. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> I do immediately have to penalize you since I have three cats, but then I do have to add points back on because having three cats, I realize and recognize that cats are the devils. I think they're smarter than dogs. They're the Einsteins of pets. There's, they're nature's Einsteins. Yes. I love dogs and I do think it goes in terms of smartness, cats, plants, dogs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, plants are really smart. They really, they are so smart. They know where the sun is. They know like where to go, what direction to head. Well, I don't think, I don't call anybody a genius who knows where the sun is. Uh... I do. <laughs> <laughs> Corinne, let's go ahead and get over to our third and final question for this round. Ready. Round, round tree, of course. Eric probably had Brandon Google, why are houseplants bad for me? And here are the headlines of the real articles that exist. Are your houseplants bad for the environment? Question mark from BBC News. The dark side of the houseplant boom from the Atlantic. Are <gasps> your houseplants environmentally friendly? From the Guardian. <gasps> your indoor plants are killing the environment and what can you do to reverse that? Part no. one. So with all those search results and articles, Corinne, I have to ask, why do you love these terrible things? All right. Here's how I'm thinking about it. Everything's killing the environment. What isn't? Everything's bad. <laughs> Right? So why can't I have a little bit of joy in my house? Also, I just don't think, I think that's clickbait. I think we got to be really careful about what we're reading on the internet. And I think <laughs> the BBC News always out for the clip. I'm not so sure about them. And okay, plants, they can be bad. And here's why. Pregnant people should not repot plants or work with soil in any form because there is some kind of like parasite or something that could be in the soil. And if you've never been exposed to it, it will be dangerous. Mm. So that is why plants are bad. That's their big flaw to me is that if I were to ever be pregnant, I'd have to get help, I guess, in repotting these guys. Um, but we don't have to worry about that. So let's see, why else are they bad? You can't leave the house for two months. You'd have to have someone come in and care for it. <laughs> oh, terrible. <laughs> six weeks fine, though. That is six chill. weeks will work. You could get away yeah. with six weeks. I got away with two, and that was kind of pushing it, but I think I could have I think I could have done some kind of humidity thing, and it would have been even sure. better. And Corinne, just to just kind of help you out and nudge you back on the track, the question <laughs> was not pile on to why these things are bad. The question was, why do you love these terrible things? Oh, okay, because they're bad. <laughs> Great. Nailed it. A uh, hundred points for honesty. <laughs> Incredible. That was the most eight mile B rabbit <laughs> shit we've ever had mm -hmm. on this podcast. Mm -hmm. You're like, yeah, you know everything about me. Plants are bad. I fucking love them. They're good guys. <laughs> Corinne, for your outright honesty, I'm going to go ahead and give you a perfect 10 out of 10. Oh, and also, yes. because Christopher Guest is waiting in my guest room, let's <gasps> turn that up to 11. 11 out of 10. Oh Incredible. my gosh. Wow. I'm getting all the... The angel numbers, 22, 11. I'm sorry, what is this? This is something I think my mother made up, which is that numbers that are the same <laughs> in a row. Uh huh. Numbers that are the same are called angel numbers? You'll have to get her on the pod. Ooh. I'm having a feeling there's an angel number in this area, <laughs> and then this, in this side of the room. That was Teresa Caputo, your mom, is Oh, yeah, that's my mom. Mm. She's okay. a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> She's an angel. I love her. Right? An That's why it's her numbers. Her. Yeah. Er, sorry, Eric, to uh, greenlight that script. <laughs> uh, okay, I want ghost, ghost, ghost mother. Okay, I want it. I want it. And All don't right. get the same cast as Ghost Dad. <laughs> Corinne, you did incredible in that round, going from 22 <gasps> points in a bingo all the way up to 133 points in a bingo. Wow. That is amazing. 133, 33, of course, being an angel number. Yeah. And my personal favorite number. Well, let's go ahead and angel on over to round four, the Wheel of Extraordinary Challenges. I've instructed my manservant, part two, Eric two, to prepare a few wacky mini games here to test your intellectual and creative metal. Eric two, what do we have today? Uh, first, I would love it if you would feed me. <laughs> of course, here's a uh, piece of an arm, a dentist's arm. Okay, hold on one second. Oh, <laughs> 
All right, here we and we're back. Misha, just cut that out. All right, uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Mr. Rafai, you can take a breather. Doctor Rafai, please. In the last three years, he's become a doctor while you were in the coma. Thank you, oh, Doctor Rafai, okay. please. Sorry, Doctor Rafai, please. You can take a breather. It's been a long three months. Sorry, uh, Doctor Rafai, LLC. <laughs> oh, Dr. Rafi LLC, Thank please, you. Esquire, please sit down. Reverend Dr. Rafi LLC, please sit down, take a breather. This is a game just for Corinne. <gasps> Corinne, I have a game for you called Plant or Fantasy Hero. Oh my gosh. Corinne, this is a game I just made up, so I appreciate <laughs> the kindness. But I did, I, if you have not heard this before, have you heard of this game before? Did I've I like never heard of it? this game, but I'm. Really not sure how I'm going to do here. No, you got it. Your mom came to me in a dream and told it to me. <laughs> so maybe that's why we're connected. Uh, all right. So is this name uh, a name of a plant that I found on the sill.com, which is one of the various millennial plant sites that you can order from? Or is this from fantasynamegenerators.com, where you can look up all different types of uh, fantasy names and they'll just fucking give you a bunch. It's awesome. That's really fun. Uh, you also can get some extra points if you come up with how they fit in a fantasy novel, uh, regardless of if they are plants or um, from fantasynamegenerators.com. For example, here's an example, Monstera Deliciosa. Obviously, we talked about it. It's a plant, but it could also be a big spider mo woman who lives in the woods. That is so true. And that is yeah. the energy mine gives. That's good. That's good. All right. First one, Corinne. Maria Cordyline. Is that a plant or a name from the fantasy name generator? That is a fantasy name generator. And she is someone who can crawl through the walls to another house. <laughs> she should just go through that wall and go to the She can just go through wall. the walls. <laughs> Incredible. I appreciate you, but that is not no. a fantasy name generator. That is a plant. Uh, I flipped the name on that. That is actually a Cordyline Maria. If you're looking for, to add some color to your plant collection, may we suggest the Cordyline Maria? Its long, lance shaped leaves grow into bright shades of pinks and reds, anywhere from an electric fuchsia to a deep maroon. Thanks, the sill.com. Thanks, the sill. <laughs> Eric, to go ahead and make a note to build some structures to my neighbor's houses just so I can crawl through the walls to their house yep absolutely. i'm tired of going outside <laughs> just go from one wall to another <laughs> absolutely all right uh we are going to go to the next one which is the dracena warnecki that is a plant that is a hundred percent a plant but it could be a woman who knocks on doors in the middle of the night <laughs> this is I'm coming that. up with the strangest women <laughs> I hate that. I like how <laughs> this is how we fix the fantasy genre. Just weird women yep. all the time. Well, this is me, again, looking around my apartment, noticing that there's a door to the outside and saying, okay, great. What can what can a fantasy character do with that? Have you read the new Brandon Sanderson? It's about a woman who knocks on your door. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Uh, I heard. I heard that. Uh, I heard that Maria Cordyline and Dracena Warnecki is why the third name of the wind book is taking so long. <laughs> Eric, make a note to email Brandon Sanderson about the idea, uh, way of rings, about a woman who rings a doorbell. Yes, mm, oh, he'll like that. That's yeah. fantasy. That's good stuff. <laughs> All right, third one. Olo Chubb. Is that a fantasy name from a fantasy name generator? Or is that a name of a plant? I think it's a fantasy name. That is. That is from the Hobbit name generator. <laughs> I was like, I've never heard of a plant with a chub. <laughs> <laughs> well, for $950, we can sell you one. Oh, that's why it's expensive. <laughs> Only yeah. if it's variegated. I'm here for the green and the white. Uh, all right, next one. Fiddle leaf. Is fiddle leaf plant. the name of a plant? That's a plant. I killed one of those. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> or was that the woman who knocks on doors? She killed it? She came in in the middle of the night while I was away for six months and <laughs> didn't water it. Mm. That's fair. Uh, I know this one was pretty obvious. I know a lot of people have fiddle leaf figs, but man, uh, it sure does sound like a hobbit name, huh? <laughs> like really fiddle leaf does. is going to have second breakfasties right now. It really does. All right. That is another point for you. All right. Averti Luongo. Is that, uh, is that from a fantasy name generator or is that uh, a plant? This is tough. I think it's fantasy. That is specifically is from the heroic horse name generator. Oh, yes, of course. That's a horse. Yeah, we love a Verdi. I love that guy. <laughs> uh, number six, the Marble Queen. Um, plant. That is a plant. Pothos. The Marble Queen is a type of pothos. That's what it's I have. Also, it's also an ABBA B-side song. 
Oh, how does that go? I don't know that one. Marble Queen, old and hard, only <laughs> 17. <laughs> Everyone loves it when it's old and hard. You are cold. You are cold. Imported from Italy. Ooh, Marble Queen. It's hard to improvise songs. Meryl Streep did that in in the bonus episodes. Exactly. (laughs) But they cut it out because Pierce Brosnan's face was in it. Yep. You have to. Incredible. All right. uh, How about Valley Throne? Valley Throne. Okay. I can picture that in the font that the Sill uses. So I want to say it's a plant. <laughs> <laughs> it is sans serif as hell. It has that one cartoon style with like a woman in yeah. overalls holding the plant. There's a clay pot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, no, that is from the fantasy uh, name generator. That's from the fake court generator. Okay. Well, it does seem like a color the sill is going to like push next season or something. Valley throne. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a light purple. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, number eight. How about Guy Montag? That is a fantasy name. <laughs> um, well, it kind of goes both it's ways. An IRL one name. Well, it <laughs> it is a plant, as in it's not from fantasy. It's from Fahrenheit four fifty one. Okay. So, <laughs> so I, it's neither. But I did plant it in there to uh-huh. trip you up. Yeah. So I'll yeah. give you the point anyway. I appreciate I that. Fahrenheit four fifty one must be a tropical plant. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it thrives best next to fires and overt metaphor. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sorry. You said it was the fantasy name generator. Unfortunately, I cannot give you the oh. point because it is a plant. I don't and, know. And in order, it was a trick. So I cannot no. give you the point. All right. This is the last one, Corinne. This is Tricolor Carnosa. Plant. Yeah, that's a plant. I know that one. I thought it sounded like a, I thought it sounded like a fantasy pirate. Okay. I know that plant. That's why I know it's a plant. Because you're completely right. It does sound completely made up. Yeah. Like he's on like a steampunk pirate ship mm-hmm. that flies through the sky. Yep. I can picture him. Okay, what what do you think, Tri? What what kind of woman <laughs> is Tricolor Carnosa? This is someone who knocks on windows. This is someone who's who's coming in your dreams and like there's suddenly a face in the window. All of these are horror women, by the way. <laughs> no, I I got that they were horror women, definitely. <laughs> All right, Corinne, that, you did very well on this. You got seven out of nine points. Oh, my god. And I'm going to round that up to an eight out of ten. That's eight more points for you. Eight out of eight would be Angel. <laughs> Eric, Eric too. Let's make it angel, please. All right, it's eight. All right, let's erase. Let's erase the guy Montag question that I asked. That's an eight out of eight, baby. You nailed it. See, this That's is like perfect. anytime I go to Santa Fe and order eggs or something, I'm always like, make it uh, Christmas style. You know, where they put the red sauce and the hatch green chili sauce. Yeah. From now oh. on, anytime I order something, I'm gonna say and make it angel. <laughs> Is that when they give you 11 or that it has like a hundred eyes and hands? Oh, either that or it could be spongy cake or it could be a... That's when they round the price up to, to uh, like, they're going to cu- charge you 11-11 or whatever. 8-74. No, no, no. I'll be playing a, a paying 11-11. <laughs> could also be a brooding goth vampire who's misunderstood. Yes. When they're ringing up your stuff, they're levitating a foot above the ground and they won't tell you how. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. That's Chris Angel style. That's Chris <laughs> Angel style. Really busy T-shirt. <laughs> Just chains everywhere. It shouldn't be. What is he up to? I don't want to know. I feel like if we say his name three times, he'll appear like. Yeah, the I think, I think so he has right. a residency at a local Denny's. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> he's he's the resident Denny's magician from now on. I'm gonna make your trip. I'm gonna make your grand slam disappear. Oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> eats it really fast. Looked it up, and Chris Angel is in Branson, Missouri. Oh, is it a residency in Branson, Missouri? I didn't look it up. Could be. I, do, <laughs> do you think I would waste one iota of interneting power on Chris Angel? No, no, no. No, 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 no absolutely not. Uh, Eric, what is our current total? All right, we are at 141 <gasps> points plus the bingo, whatever is underneath the bingo sticker. All right, let's go ahead and remove that sticker. Oh, Ooh, my God. Wow. Can I tell you what I want it to be? Please. Minus 30, and it's 111. Corinne, you must, <laughs> as per your last namesake, you must have some sort of psychic ability because, just like you said, Occam's Razor style, it is negative 30. <laughs> so you currently stand at 1111, which is, yeah. is, is that now a devil's number? Uh, no, not until you get to six. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's make it 666. Okay. okay. Let's invite that energy in. Well, I'm trying to turn it to 666 and my fingers won't do it. I can't do it. Well, we don't have to invite it in. I'm sure it'll knock first. 
Oh, yeah. You get to say if it can come in or not. Oh, that was Chris Angel. That wasn't the devil. <laughs> we saw him. He was there. He's in Branson. He's fine. It's fine. Um, so, Corinne, you currently stand at 666. You're knocking at the front door of the number one spot held by your friend and co-host, Dr. Moya. Mm-hmm. Dr. Moya McTeer, my co-host of Pale Blue Pod. It's true. And that makes me excited, but also totally fine. Because that means Pale Blue Pod's going to dominate the top two. Absolutely. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming on. I think you're currently... Sorry, we have we have the one more. We have the thing that we have to... What's that, Eric, too? <gasps> Free me! One more, one <gasps> more question! Oh, oh yes. No. My fake eye just reminded me. One more thing. For a final bonus point, you will answer this random trivia question about the world's most perfect film and name for a houseplant. Greece. Oh no. Oh well, oh well, oh well. Uh, uh, producer <laughs> Alan Carr made a deal to feature Pepsi in the local diner, the Frosty Palace. But the prop manager didn't get the memo and put a Coca Cola sign instead. What did the production team do to fix this, Corinne? Did they say that Coca Cola was out of order? Mm, that's a good guess. I'll give you, uh, what's an angel number? I'll give you 10 more guesses to make it an even 11. Okay. Well, here's what <laughs> happened. I have mostly seen Grease in middle school. It was what the substitute teacher would play when the t- when my course teacher was out. Um, but they would never, you know, say, hey, we watched the first 40 minutes of Grease. Next time we're out, we should watch the, n- the next few minutes, like pick up mm. at minute 40. So I'm very familiar with the first 40 minutes of Grease, and I can't <laughs> sure. tell you what the end of Greece is. <laughs> well, the end of Greece is, of course, uh, Sandy um, and Danny get into a car and fly off into the sky, thus <gasps> yeah, showing the audience that they did actually drown on the beach in the intro of the movie. <laughs> and the whole interstitial uh, 90 minutes has been a dream. I actually have some research on this that I really wanted to show. While we were looking up this particular factoid, which we still don't have the answer for, um, this was from a USA Today article, and so uh, someone asked John Travolta about that, if he thought that Sandy was dead the whole time, and he said, I love it! Imaginations are awesome! These <laughs> things are bound to happen to something timeless like this! It's so fun! Sylvester Stallone, get out of here! We're trying to get John Travolta to talk. <laughs> Adrian! Sorry! <laughs> So, Corinne, I'll give you one more guess because one guess okay. plus another guess equals 11, technically. So, one more guess to what the production team did to fix the mistake about featuring Coca Cola instead of Pepsi. Okay, if I was the production team and we're not going to put an out of order sign, maybe mm. it's a sign that says, This is gross. This one's gross. Honestly, so much better than what they did. So much better. Eric, Eric 2, please print me a t-shirt that says this one's gross with the arrow pointing to you. That is fantastic merchandising. I want to see it in every Spencer's across America. Uh, I'm going to start mocking up right now. Absolutely. (laughs) Corinne, I'm so sorry. The answer was they blurred it with 1978 technology and it looked so bad. Of course. Of course they did. Corinne, I do want to, since it sounds like you're a real grease head, or at least for the first 40 minutes, <laughs> I do want to give you an opportunity to say, do you know what Kanicki orders in the Frosty Palace? Um, Probably a Pepsi. He orders an Eskimo pie. Ugh, mm. why? Do you know what Kanicki <laughs> offers, which is like a Hallmark card? He cares to send the very best. Um, it's a, it's I... a, it's a first base kind of move. It rhymes, okay, it, he... it rhymes with his name. And it rhymes with his name. Hickey? Yes, yeah. from the character I just said. Roz. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I guess that's a slant rhyme. Uh, it's a hickey from Kanicki. We're going to give you partial points. We're going to give you, we're going to give, and we'll give you half a point. And what we're going to do with half a point is we're going to cut 666 in half to make it 333, yeah. a, mm-hmm. a much more heavenly palatable number. Yes. If you believe in such things. That is the good number. Uh, Eric, do you have a little more information about that blurring of the Coca-Cola sign? I do. So I, when I was looking up where they had the interview uh, with John Travolta, they also said that they wanted to fix this. This was so bad that they did it in 1978 that for the 40th anniversary update, they actually digitally painted over it. 
We've been wanting to fix the Coke sign since the day Grease was released. It drove us crazy, said Andre Callis, vice president of Paramount Pictures Archives, who oversaw the year-long restoration. Now we have the technology to do it seamlessly. Instead of, like, smudging the frame with yeah. someone's thumb like they did. It was ridiculous. And now if only they could digitally remove Lorenzo Lamas. Well, Corinne, thank you so much. <laughs> You stand at 333 points, which I believe is second place. Eric, go ahead and take us to the leaderboard. Absolutely. All right, get out of the way, Adrian 2, Audrey 2. We got to look at the big board. Sorry, Doctor. Sorry, Doctor. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Corinne, you are rocketing up our high scoreboard. We are dropping Matt Young, who had 72 points with toy collecting from our first episode. Get out of here, Matt Young. Uh, we <gasps> Now you can see now in fifth place with 73.666 repeating, that is Janet Varney, who talked about miniatures. Tied for third at 76 points is Amanda McLaughlin talking about retirement plans and Jeffrey Craner talking about the Dallas <laughs> Cowboys. Corinne, you are slotting in to number two uh, with 333 points, talking about houseplants, of course. And number one, still Dr. Moya McTeer with 5,075 points talking about exoplanets. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. So I was never going to get there. Congratulations to Moya. And I'll tell you what got you there. The first step, that story about getting houseplants during the pandemic. You got, yeah, of course it did. It was like a George Saunders novella. Beautiful stuff. (laughs) Hopefully you did it on the 10th of December. Corinne, before we get you back on that plane, this time flown by an octopus, do you Mm -hmm. have anything you want to plug? Yes, my podcast, Pale Blue Pod, is out, and it comes out weekly every Monday. Um, It's the best part of Mondays, and it is about space. Moya, Dr. Moya McTeer is an astrophysicist and explains scary space concepts to me, and it's so cozy. It's a really cozy show. Outstanding. I look forward to listening to it. Uh, Eric, too, do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, Hey, now it's fine to water me after midnight. Don't (laughs) worry about it. Just don't. It's all fine. Interesting. Not sure if I believe you. We'll have to call Natasha Leone in to see if you're telling the truth. Well, that's all for this episode of Tell Me About It. Tune in next week for more Steve's Leaves, Activating the Node, and Angel Numbers. Say goodbye, Eric, too. Goodbye, Eric, too. 